Hello everyone. Thank you for joining us on the third episode of the Masterclass series. Today, we'll look at how you could leverage the visual change workflows using Service Desk Plus. In, in the first couple of epi episodes, we saw the hacks, tips and tricks to improve your instant management and service request management. And in that direction, today we'll see how ch if visual change workflows adds a lot more efficiency into your change enablement process. I'm Zafan and I'll be the trainer for this webinar today. So this is the agenda and we'll first see what change workflows are and why they are important. Then we'll deconstruct a workflow and we'll see the various components that goes into a workflow in Service Desk Plus, and we'll see the functionalities of each of those components. Then we'll build a workflow from scratch, create a workflow, and we'll map it to a template and we'll see it in action. All of these we'll see parallelly with the use case so that we understand all of this better. Finally, we'll be able to comprehend how these workflows can help you manage critical changes with, while minimizing risk. All right, so we have Zilka. So Zilker is an organization that's spread across the world and their quality of services has been deteriorating lately. And their IT department decides that it is because of the Singapore data center. So to improve the performance of the data center, they plan a critical change where it would enhance their data center performance. However, to, to go ahead with this change, they do not have a proper change, in pro change process in place. Without a proper change process, they're not sure how large the impact would be or where it, which part of their organization would get most impacted. They are in a blind spot. So they face four major hurdles due to the lack of a proper workflow that, to, that could take this major change, that could handheld this uh, major change through systematic stages. The four challenges that Zilka faced due to the lack of workflows are lack of visibility on what will happen next in the change process. Because of this, they do not know which, uh, which uh, part of the organization would get impacted. They, do, they cannot track the change on each implementation phase. Next, they could not plan properly for the delays. For such a crucial change, when things go south, it can cause a lot of confusion and anxiety. And Zilka, though they did plan pretty well, they were not able to uh, face all the uh, issues that, that came up and they did not have a proper backup plan in place. And next, they did not have a proper communication channel set up. They were not able to communicate to certain uh, parts of the organization and organization leaders were disappointed that they were not able to access the services. They weren't even aware that such a major change were going on. This led to many calls to the IT department and there were a lot of explanations going on. Going on. Finally, they, were not, uh, they did not see, see approvals becoming a delay for them. And approval is a formality uh, and especially in uh, such a critical change, there will be lots of approvals. And there will, this led to a lot of to and fro email conversations and when they were not able to automatically trigger approvals and send the change details along with the approvals, this led to redundant information transfer. So these four hurdles uh, severely deteriorated the change implementation experience for Zilka. And it was a long delayed process. So to to, uh, to include a workflow in their organization, Zilka decided to embrace change workflows with Service Desk Plus. So with Service Desk Plus change workflows, Zilka was able to define the sequences of the stage and status that the change would travel through in this entire journey. They were able to uh, include notifications, approvals, conditional rules that split the journey of the, uh, split the pathways of the ch uh, change request, and switches would, which would create a multi-directional path for the change journey. And they were able to create such complicated workflows for their major changes rather easily with the drag and drop graphic canvas. They were able, also able to use, this, uh, use multiple workflows for many of their different frequently occurring changes since it was a lot easier to build and did not require any uh, technical expertise. Finally, with the change management module itself, they were able to overcome these changes without any collision with other change. And all the other nitty gritty components help them elevate their change uh, enablement process. So we'll see how Zilker did all this in Service Desk Plus now, shall we? All right. So this is the change management module of Service Desk Plus. Now let's access the workflows that Zilker has made. This is the setup page. And under the automation, we have workflows. Once we head over to the workflow, we can see a data center upgrade workflow, a purpose-built workflow for the Singapore data upgrade process. 
we can see Zilka's work workflow laid out over here. It might seem quite complicated, but let me break it down for you and it would be a lot more simpler. There are many uh, tiles over here. So these tiles are called nodes. And the one of the most important and the back uh, and one of the most important node and the, it's also the backbone of the change workflow is the stage node. You can see six stages over here: submission, planning, cab evaluation, implementation, review, and close. And under each stage, there are values listed over here. These are the statuses that a change request would go through at each stage. So, for instance. A change request when it's in the submission stage, it would either take up the requested status, accept it, or the rejected status. The lines over here are called connectors, and they signify the direction and the path of the change. Now, let's visualize one of the paths that a change request would take using this uh, Zilker's workflow. So, uh, if I could, uh, if I'm highlighting the path over here, once the change request is started it would take up the requested status. From there, it would, it would go on to the second type of node, which is the approval node. An approval node automatically triggers an approval, and therefore, it would, re it would reduce the delays that Zilka had faced. Over here, we could see that an approval is uh, triggered to the IT director. Once the IT director approves it, the path leads to the accepted status in the submission stage. From the accepted status, we could see the change moving to the planning stage while it's taking the planning in progress status. Over here, we could see the third type of node that Zilka has used, the conditional node. As I mentioned earlier, a conditional node splits the pathways for a change request, thereby creating a bidirectional path. Now, the condition over here is that if the plan is ready, then it would automatically send the change request to another approval to the change manager. If it's not ready, it would change the status of the change request to request it for more information. Now, once the approval is given by the change manager, this the change request would then head over to the cab evaluation stage. Under cab evaluation stage, we could see another approval configured by Zilka. And once the cab has approved the change, the switch node is activated. This is the fourth type of node that Zilka has used. A switch node is an extension of the condition node. A switch node creates a multi-directional path, whereas a condition node only creates a bi-directional path. So over here, the switch node would take up any of the parameters of the change request. So over here, if the impact of the change affects a block, a site, or a business, and according to each of these values, you could create three different paths. Over here, Zilka has called, mapped uh, two paths. That is, if, if, if it affects the block and the site, a set of notifications would be sent to uh, certain executives. And if it affects the business, a potential business downtime notification would be sent to the chief executive officers. Now, from here, it heads over to the implementation stage. And under implementation stage, once it's completed successfully, it, it uh, heads over to the penultimate stage, which is the post-implementation review. And post-implementation review has another approval process and a notification link to it. Once post-implementation review is completed, it heads over to the close stage. Over here, however, if things didn't go well, if the implementation went south, the Zilka change manager could also back out from the change. When the backout status is activated, a field update would happen. This is the sixth type of node that Zilka has used. Once a field update node is activated, it would update the values automatically in the change request. So over here, when uh, the backout status, uh, status is uh, activated, a backout plan would automatically be uh, updated into the change request. So therefore, then there is no need to panic during those hard, uh, hard, uh, hard times or confusing times. So in this way, you could see that Zilka has created a multi-directional path workflow that would work uh, for that would handheld their change request through each stage in a systematic process. And now it seems a lot more easier when I break it down for you, right? Wonderful. Now let's see how we could build this workflow from scratch. I'll just hold on a moment. Let me have a sip of water. Now let's head back to our changeless work view, workflow view. All right. So we are here in the change change workflows tab, and we could create a new workflow. And once we click new workflow, we'll be thrown into the canvas editor. And in the canvas editor, as soon as we enter, we can see two stages. The submission and the close stage are default and mandatory for any change workflow to function. So that is why they're already present when we enter the change workflow editor canvas. 
This is a drag and drop canvas. So let's make some room in the center for all the other stages that we're going to add. Let's give it a name first. Let's create a major slash minor change workflow. So this workflow should work for both major changes and minor changes. So we can create versatile workflows that could that could be associated to different types of change. Or we could also create a rather elaborate workflow that would work for the critical changes that happens in an organization. So over here, first, let's add a condition node. So let's have a condition that if the change is high risk, it should take up a certain path. Let me add the criteria over here and click on save. So the conditional node is ready. And if the change is a change that's requested is high risk, then it, it needs an approval with the IT director. So let's drag an approval node to the canvas and name it IT director, add an, add the approver. So under approvers list, we have four, four lists. Uh, we can choose change users and roles where we can choose all the change group members or the different change roles of the, of the process. Or we can choose from the organizational roles, whether they are general manager, vice president directly. We can also choose various cab members or directly the entire cab itself. And we can choose users as well directly by typing in their names. However, since we know it's going to be an IT director, let's directly choose IT director for this change. Let's add a subject over here. Let's change the subject over here. Approval required for change. Rather than me typing the title, if I type in the dollar symbol, it would fetch all the variables that are available in the change request sorted in alphabetical order. So for the title, I need to scroll all the way down. All right, I got it. And let me click Save. Great, so we have an approval in place as well. Now let's map all this. Once the change is uh, requested, just follow me here. If the connector would go to the condition node, so the change would take the path that to the condition node where it would check whether the change is of high risk. If the change is high risk, the change would move on to an approval where it needs an approval to move further. Once the IT director approves it, let's create a path from the approved status to the accepted status. Once it's approved by the IT director, it would take on the accepted status. However, if it's denied, it goes on to the rejected status. Now, what happens if the change uh, is low risk, if it's not high risk? So from no, we have to, we have to create a path to accept it. However, let's add a notification node over here that just tells the IT director that a minor change is going to happen. So you can create new notifications by clicking on the plus icon. I've already created a notification for the IT director, so I'll just choose that. Now, since our notification is here, let me drag a power connector from the outlet port of the condition node. And from the outlet port of the notification node, let me drag a path and select it to accept it. So we have the first set, first section of our workflow. Next, let's get on to the second stage, the planning stage. The planning stage is chosen. Let's choose the statuses that the change request would take over here. Um, it will be submitted for review and planning in progress. Let me reorganize that and click save. Cool. So from the submission stage, let me drag a connector and add it to the planning stage. Under planning in progress, let's add a notification. There is an envelope icon over here. If I click it, it notify, it can automatically send notifications when the change request uh, uh, arrives in that status. So again, it, the same rule applies over here. I could choose organization role, change users, cab, or anyone. So the, the idea of the notification over here is to tell the change, uh, the stakeholders of the change that the change is accepted and now it's time for planning. So we, it's more of a calling of all the group change group members to come and plan for the change. So let's choose all the uh, applicable change roles over here. Great. And we have configured a notification right within the workflow. The yellow envelope signifies that a notification would be sent when this uh, when the change request takes up that status. Cool. So now when the planning is done and it could be submitted for review, let's add a switch node over here. So this would create a multi-directional path. So once the planning is done and they realize the impact of the change, would, how much the impact of the change would be, according to the impact, let's create two paths. So let the impact either be affecting business, affecting department, and affecting user. Now, from the submitted review, let's drag a connector and add it to the switch node. 
Now, if the uh, change affects a business or a department, it would be considered a major change. However, if it's gonna affect only few users, it's gonna, it's gonna be considered a minor change. So over here, I think we should use the field update node. A field update node, as I mentioned, would automatically update the values in the change request. So when the impact is gonna be affecting business or affecting the department, the change value would be the change type in the change request would change into major change. You could create new field update rules over here by choosing the fields the, and the values that it should take up. However, I already created a major change and, and a minor change field update, and I will choose that for now. Let me drag another field update node and choose minor change. So from the, from the switch node, now we have a two directional path. Let me drag the affects user to the minor change and affects business and department into the major change. All right. Now, it seems a bit cluttered, right? So let's zoom out and rearrange a bit to get more space. Cool. So let's add the third stage, which would be the cab evaluation stage. Over here, we'll take up three statuses. And a major change only needs a cab evaluation, since the impact would be high. The cab members are uh, team uh, or members from various uh, parts of the organization, various departments of the organization. They come together to recommend and suggest any uh, 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 any suggestions to the change, uh, depending on the uh, amount of impact they'd be facing due to the change. So these cab members do need not be only technicians, they could be users for the organization as well. So for a major change which impacts a complete business or many departments, it needs a cab evaluation. However, a minor change can directly skip it and head over to the implementation stage. So I've also added the implementation stage where the implementation could be in progress, completed, or it can also be backed out. So over here, we already created two paths for major change and the minor change. The major change would go through the cab evaluation process for an extra review process, sorry, extra approval process, whereas a minor change would directly head over to implementation. And we can add an approval process to the cab evaluation where it would, where we could choose the cab members or directly the entire cab. So we have a major change cab. We can choose uh, select members under the uh, change advisory board, or we could choose the entire cab as, as well. And we have five levels of uh, configuration for approval process. Any one of the change may advisory board, if they approve it, it can be considered as an approved change, or we can also choose for every one of their cab to approve it. We can also choose various levels of the majority of the uh, of the cab uh, to approve it, such as the percentage or overall the majority as well. So for now, for the sake of simplicity, well, let's just choose anyone to approve and save it. So we also added an approval node for the cab evaluation. Let's just loop it into the stage from the approval pending status. It would activate the approval. And from the approved status, it would head over to the approved, whereas the denied status would head over to rejected. And from the approved status, it would go to the in progress implementation stage. And from implementation stage, you could always add a review stage and it would be the penultimate stage. You can also see there are two extra stages over here, user acceptance testing and release. These would be applicable for if uh, deploying new services or uh, such such cases. However, right now it, it, it need not come into play. So in Service Desk Plus, you can add up to eight levels of stages. Uh, however, we're gonna add only six stages for, for the major or minor change workflow. Let's add the various status that a review process or review stage could give. All right, so we have all the stages in our Canvas editor now. If you just map it right now, we would pretty much have a simple workflow that would work for both, um, sorry, that would work for both major and minor changes at the same time. So with this, you could see that you could create versatile workflows that would work for uh, uh, the frequently used changes and various types of changes. Or like Zilka, you could create a complete workflow for the entire uh, for a major, for a critical change such as a DC center upgrade as well. So this creates a, a systematic process for each of your change workflows. And you could create a combination of uh, um, the six type of nodes and take, and this would help you create very unique paths that would 
pretty pretty much mimic the process that you wish to uh, as uh, keep in your organization all right so now we saw how we could easily create a workflow from scratch now let's see how this workflow works when used in a ticket and associated with a ticket so we'll see how zilka used in their ticket as well so let's let's head over to the change ticket list view over here zilka um, uh, already has requ has requested a ticket and we'll we'll go through the entire ticket journey with zilka so on the top right corner we have three views uh, sorry let's just exit that page some network issue over here let me reload it all right so we're back wonderful so on the top right corner we have three different views the list view the calendar view and the template view the calendar view shows the various changes that you have planned for the month and you could avoid any change collisions and plan better so zilka has initiated the change in this month since there isn't any change planned in their organization so let's check the ticket uh, the change request that zilka has submitted this is how a change request would look like on the left hand column you have the various stages that a change would go through so we did configure submission to close and right now it's at the submission stage and it's in progress which uh, which shows which is shown by the orange color over here and we could see the various change properties captured by the change template form and the change details as well including the description so with this a complete information and detail can be captured right within the change request and any stakeholders involved with the change can can come and check this out so that they will be or they will be everyone involved every stakeholder involved with the change will be on the same page thereby uh, avoiding any miscommunication or misaligned expectations now let's see how you could also configure a change template and capture all these information and customize these change processes to your organization level that is how do you customize a change type an impact urgency priority these are small fee a small components of the change that overall improve your change process so let's see how you could customize that so under the admin section we can right so we are at the admin uh, section the setup page uh, under templates and forms we have change template a change template is very similar to the incident template and the service request template where you can drag and drop various fields onto the canvas and you can also create new fields from the new fields column where you have a list of uh, different types of fields that you could drag and drop to capture the right information and the main uh, thing to note over here is you could associate a workflow directly with the change so for assuming we are going to create a major and minor change template so we can associate directly the major and minor change workflow that we created so once this change request is initiated automatically the workflow would be triggered thereby you wouldn't need to uh, miss out on any changes as well this also automatically triggers any all the notification the conditional nodes and the approvals that we've triggered and over here under type we have two type uh, two listings general and emergency a general change is the usual change which goes through all the stages however an emergency change is one that is pre approved it doesn't have an approval process since when something goes wrong and we are not we, we were not uh, aware of it and we need to quickly act in a situation we go, we don't act, uh, go on and create a template and create a request at that moment we get right into the action so once the change is resolved then we retrospectively create a record for the change and that is where an emergency change template would come forward so for now a major or minor change template is a general one and we could keep it like that you could pre-populate all the fields over here such as um, whether if it would affect the business affect the block or you could also keep it uh, empty for the change requested to fill it up so similarly uh, uh, apart from that it's pretty similar to the incident management and the service request template so uh, from here let's see the various uh, the change properties that we see over here such as the impact the change roles that are listed over here such as change owner change manager and so on so let's head back to our setup page and on the customization call uh, topic we see change management again and under change management we could see the various uh, minor customizations that that are listed over here so you could create multiple change types so zilka over here has created four change types critical major minor and standard the green badge on the 
on uh, on the left hand column signifies that it's a pre approved state uh, change a minor or a standard change need not have approval so just clicking on the green badge would make a change pre approved a major change is in, isn't a pre approved change it needs approval so let's check that back all right so from here let's head over to a change advisory board as i mentioned change advisory boards are a group of members from different parts of the organization who would uh, who could come together to uh, offer recommendations for the change depending on the impact that they receive due to the change so you could create any number of cab over here with any uh, members listed from the drop down list you can also set the levels of risk that a change would have and how your organization process dictates so so you can create the risk basically signifies the level of uncertainty that a change would bring in if it's a very predictable change uh, and you know who would get impacted or what kind of issues can arise it's a low risk change the reason for change are reasons that you could group together and quickly understand why a change would, is needed same goes for closure code where you could understand the final state of the change by quickly seeing the closure code and you could grab you could configure new closure codes according to your organization process over here the stage and status as i mentioned are the backbone of the change workflow there can be eight stages in uh, in service desk plus uh, workflows and you could configure all the different statuses that a change would take up in this section a change role is also a key part in a change workflow since with each change role each would have granular access permission for instance let's add a reviewer role for this change process and you could see below that you could granularly select all the different uh, permissions that a reviewer would have at each stage of the change journey so a reviewer let's assume would need to have edit privileges and approving privileges in the review stage so, and uh, he uh, he or she can view the change through a submission to close but cannot take any other action during that stage and the one main thing to note over here is a change role can either be a technician only or you can get, it can be any other users as well as i mentioned just like in a change advisory board there will be other uh, non technicians who would be impacted by the change or organizational leaders who are not in a technical background coming forward to help with the change so they you can add even users and you can add only technicians as well all right and this is how you customize the change to your organization process now let's head back to zilker and let's see how they are going forward with the change now okay so this is the ticket now we can see where we are at the workflow over here by clicking on the workflow awesome so you can see the green highlighted path over here this is the path that the change request has traveled already and the yellow highlighted status is the uh, status the change is resting right now so the highlighted green highlighted path ends at the approval node meaning an approval has been triggered and the uh, change workflow is waiting for the approval from the it director now let's approve it and see where the workflow takes us so on the top right approval panel we can get we have the approval over here i could directly take actions by entering comments here however i can also click the approval and get the complete change details as well i have the complete information so thereby there is no need of uh, um, repeated back and forth emails asking for the change details and so on this significantly reduces the delay that happens due to approval formalities now let's proceed with the change and approve it all right so once the approval is given in 30 seconds the change would uh, would um, would refresh itself and would update it to the latest workflow let's see the workflow for an instant and see where this workflow would take us so once the it director has given approval yes we got a new approval over here so once the it director has given approval it would head over to the planning stage on the left hand panel you could see the planning stage being highlighted right now and the submission stage has become green in color now under planning we have dedicated sections to completely cover all aspects of the plan we have dedicated sections to capture the impact details attachments where you could add the impact analysis for all the stakeholders to view you could add a separate rollout plan a backout plan and also a checklist to there to keep things in mind and not miss out on anything also you could add the schedule over here you could choose the re release schedule so let's assume the release would happen around Ma may 11th 
and the scheduled end would be on May 11th at maybe around nine in the night. And once the release schedule is configured, you could also add the downtime. We've already uh, configured a downtime over here. However, let's choose the schedule start and schedule end according to the release schedule. So that could be potential business downtime on May 11th at four o'clock till at nine o'clock. Great. Now we have also uh, configured the downtime right within the planning stage itself. So all the stakeholders involved, including the, the different parts of the organization can be aware of it. In case you do want to make an announcement on the top right corner, you have the actions button where you could make an announcement from right within the ticket. You could choose the information. The overall change details are automatically populated over here. However, you could choose what, what announcement to make by changing this. You could schedule the announcements over here and you could ensure this announcement is, uh, is private. That is only technicians can view this announcement. Or if it's an enterprise wide announcement, you could choose uh, choose public over here. And if you want only certain user groups who, uh, who needs access to the announcement, you could choose shared and choose the user group who would be affected by this change and announce it only to them as well. Now, you can also uh, make sure your planning is even more better by associating the, uh, the request incidents and the problems that initiated this change. So over here, you could choose all the problems and the request incidents and attach it directly to the plan so that the technicians would, would have complete inf information on why we are why we need this change and how we are going to go about it. So now we saw the complete details that are available in the planning stage. Let's see where we are at the workflow. So we could see uh, 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 the change request has traveled a lot more. And under the planning stage, it's right now the status is in planning in progress. And we could see a conditional node is activated. That is if the planning plan is ready. And we saw the complete details on impact analysis, change, rollout plan, backout plan. So yes, the plan is ready. So once the condition uh, is yes, the node approval has been triggered. So right now the change request is waiting for an approval from the change manager. So let's give the approval and see where the change takes us right now. Let's head over to our approval panel. Yes, we already have an approval waiting for us. Let's say plan looks great. Let's move forward and choose approve. All right. So next, we'll uh, within 30 seconds, it would update itself and the approval and the workflow would kick in and move the change request to the next stage. The next stage right now, we could see on the left hand panel that it is the cab evaluation stage. As we mentioned, we did select a cab members for it. And we could see that the change has moved into the cab evaluation stage automatically. And we have the cab members listed over here and we could see who, who is yet to give approval over here. So let's, let me directly give approval here so that we, uh, it's done. And once approval is done, uh, it's green flagged and we'll see where we are at the workflow. It would move into implementation. And once it moves into implementation, let's check the workflow again. All right, so let's check the workflow now. Great, so we are at the implementation stage and let's check the workflow and see what the workflow has in store for us. Wow, almost half the workflow is done. So from the approval stage, the plan got approved. And if you could follow my cursor, I'm highlighting the path that the change request has taken and uh, you could see that it has now gone over to the approval pending in cab evaluation. Then I just approved the uh, approved uh, the ticket and the switch node was activated. So since the impact is that it affects the business, this change would definitely affect the business. A potential business downtime has notification has been sent to the chief executive officers. From there, the approved status was uh, was selected and then the implementation stage has come across here. So right now we are over here where the uh, in progress status is highlighted. Now, from here in implementation stage, you can add the tasks that are needed to implement this, uh, this change, the various amounts of tasks. And we saw the complete functionality of tasks in service desk plus in the previous two episodes. So we won't be going deep into that. However, you, uh, you can also associate a project to the change as well. So a project has a lot more capabilities involved, which would uh, uh, severely help when managing such a large change. It would have a Gantt chart. It would have a resource management chart. 
However, uh, this it would be out of scope for this episode. We will capture uh, how you could leverage project management in another episode. And you can also uh, uh, track the wreck incidents that are occurring due to this change as well, right within the implementation stage. So implementation stage is very key into it, a uh, key stage of the change workflow. And uh, that you, since there could be many incidents that occur due to the implementation, you could, you could track it right within the change and you won't lose visibility into your implementation process. And Zilka was facing that problem. One of their main problem was their lack of visibility and they did not know who was getting impacted. And with this, they were able to directly associate the incidents that would, that would happen due to the implementation. Now, once this change goes through implementation, gets finished and gets over to the review and close, a completed workflow would pretty much look like this. It would head over to the review stage where you could choose to choose the when the next review is to see if the performance of the data center has actually increased. And you can also have a review checklist to run application performance tests or any other checklist that you need to do. And, and finally, it would take up one of the closure codes that we have configured. And uh, right now, since the change is successfully com completed, it would take up the completed closure code. Let's take a look at a completed workflow right now. Wow, so this is a complete workflow path but that Zilka's change request took for the DC upgrade. So uh, we were traveling on the change workflow till the implementation stage. And over here from in progress, if you could uh, see the highlighted path, it's a dotted green line that, that goes from in progress to completed, meaning the status from in progress to completed was manually changed. So in this completely automated process, during implementation, that could be multiple small level of details that need to be taken care of. So you can also add a manual element to it where once the implementation is successfully completed, only then you would change the status. So this status was manually changed by the change manager. And once the uh, status comes to complete it, the automatic uh, path is taken up again. So it heads over to the review stage where uh, an approval is kicked in. The, it passes the approval, approval uh, the review with flying colors, and then it gets completed and finally takes up the completed status in the close stage. So with this, Zilka was able to implement a critical change that improved their quality of services worldwide using the visual change workflows that we saw. Isn't that easy? Seems easy right now, does it? Now, let's head back to our uh, presentation and uh, just give a quick recap of what we saw right now. So we saw how you could, how visual change workflow builds and how we could have multiple paths with the workflow. We saw the six type of nodes. A condition node creates two paths. A switch node creates a multi-directional path. An approval node would automatically trigger an approval. A notification node sends in notification and a field update node would update your change request according to the status that the change is at right now. So with the six type of nodes, you could create a complex and unique path that would mimic your change enablement process of your organization. And it is all done in a simple graphical drag and drop canvas. So you need not have any technical expertise, just a logical understanding of your change enablement process should do. We also saw how you could customize the change to your organization process that, that is having a different levels of change risk, the impact, uh, the change impact, and uh, you could also customize your change template and associate workflows directly to it as well. And you could create some two multiple change types. Uh, you could have a general type workflows. You could have emergency type work uh, change as well. Finally, we saw how the change is uh, moved from one stage to another without uh, any uh, uh, manual, um, you know, adjusting most of the process. And at the key key places, such as the implementation stage, we did see that even manual actions can be take, uh, can be added directly into the automated workflow. And with that, we see how Zilka was able to overcome this change workflow. And uh, that should be it for today, folks. Thank you and stay safe. And we'll see you in the next episode.